What to clean carburetors with is a frequently asked question, so I took some of your suggestions and decided to put them to the test. I'm really not sure how this is going to go, but I think we're going to learn something. Let's go. Between the ultrasonic cleaning videos we did uh, and testing the cleaners and if CLR would clean a carburetor, we've talked quite a bit about how to clean these. Uh, but one thing that a lot of people suggested was different solutions or methods that they use uh, to clean their carburetors. And quite honestly, I got so many responses to it, I just decided, well, let's just go ahead and try out some of the ones uh, that you all use. So what I wanted to do was get a pretty stable or pretty consistent type of carburetor to test. Now, I wasn't able to get it almost the way I wanted to, but I think we got it mostly there. We've got three in the back here. Uh, that these are 80457 Hollies. They're all 4160 series. Uh, they're all that polished type of aluminum finish. Uh, and this one is certainly a little bit older, a little bit dirtier, uh, and it wasn't that type style of finish. So I did the best I could. It's kind of hard and very expensive to buy carburetors that you're just going to trash. So um, we'll see what, how this turns out. But I wanted to try to make it as consistent as possible. So the, uh, the sample that we're going to use was all the same, and then uh, the results Hopefully, uh, we'll see what it does to the finish and does to the cleaning and all that. But uh, it, it, this one was a little bit more complicated to put together than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a very simple cleaning video, and it escalated and turned to something very expensive. So let's talk about now that we talked about the carburetors and what we're going to do. Uh, let me show you each one of the cleaning solutions we're going to use, and we'll talk about how we're going to test that. Now, before anybody gets mad at me about this, yes, we're probably going to end up ruining uh, or destroying a few of these carburetors with the methods that we're going to use. And hey, some of these carburetors have been on my website for sale for over a year. Nobody wanted them. The price was very cheap. So eh, it's time to let them go. So let's talk about the, the uh, solutions we're going to use and we'll talk a little bit how we're going to go through the process. First one we're going to use is a good old fashioned Berryman's carb cleaner dip. Uh, what we'll end up with this one is I've got a couple of these. Uh, I may have to buy one more uh, and we're going to uh, soak the carburetor in that. Obviously this seems to be a very popular one. We, we didn't uh, use this in any of the videos uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, use the uh, the Berryman's available at uh, just about any auto parts store. Uh, I think I picked these up at O'Reilly's. They were fairly expensive. They were like 40 bucks a piece. Uh, and yeah, we're going to try to do some cleaning with it. So more than likely, I think what I'll do is with the Berryman's, I'll take this one that's the dirtiest because I know what the results are going to be with this one. At least I think I know what the results are going to be. Uh, so we'll take the really dirty one and use the Berryman's to, uh, uh, to test it out. Next up is the good old-fashioned Super Clean. Now, again, this one's been used quite a bit. Um, this isn't diluted. I've got, uh, I think, three gallons of this. Uh, again, I think this is about $14.95 a gallon. Uh, so you do the math, it's kind of expensive. But uh, obviously, a lot of folks have used Super Clean. Again, I haven't uh, done a video specifically with it. Uh, this was purchased by me. I wasn't given to, uh, this by anyone. Uh, it's it's something I paid for out of pocket. I've used this in the ultrasonic cleaner. The results were okay. It wasn't uh, uh, terrible with it, but uh, um, again, it's it's kind of costly. So uh, using it uh, full time and uh, using it at full strength is kind of uh, expensive at times. But uh, Super Clean should be a good one. It should uh, uh, show some good results on these. Again. I think what I'll probably do is this one's the next worst one. I'd really like to see the super clean in action on it. So I think that's what you do is, is use it. These other two carburetors are, well, they're practically brand new. Uh, one of them I know doesn't have more than maybe 100, 200 miles on it. Uh, I cleaned it, put a rebuild kit on this one. I don't know much about it, but again, it's, well, it's practically brand new. But uh, uh, so anyway... Super clean will be in one we'll test out. Next one is a good old fashioned simple green. Now again, I think we've all probably used this in the shop for something. Uh, good stuff. I've, I've got three gallons of this. I don't remember how much this was. I think it was about the same, maybe twelve or thirteen dollars a gallon. I'll have to look and see. But uh, again, three gallons of that wasn't the cheapest thing in the world. But it's 
will get us completely submerged with uh, the carburetor we're going to clean. Again, because I, I don't have four really dirty carburetors to test this on. Some of it's gonna have to be tested on just how it reacts to the material. And that's what these last two carburetors are gonna be. They're more of a, oh, a baseline, you know, of what happens with, with these carburetors. See if there's anything that comes off of it. Um, you know, we'll try to look at that as well. See how much crud's left in the, uh, in the in the solution when it's after it's done soaking for, you know, a period of time. But uh, yeah, simple green, green should be an easy one. And last but not least, one that I thought was kind of strange, um, but my garage is going to smell nice, I guess, for a, a, a week or two here, but uh, pine salt. Um, and again, uh, I could see where this will work. I mean, pine salt obviously is a really good cleaner. Um, you know, I, I think diluting it down might... Uh, uh, change that a little bit so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to test this one yet uh, I may end up going and buying another one of these again I don't remember how much I paid for it but uh, I kind of blacked out after uh, spending uh, all the money on the carburetors and uh, all the cleaning supplies so I've got quite a bit invested in this one but I think it's worthwhile to see how pine saw reacts and how it reacts on the finish of some of these carburetors which is part of the test in this i want to see uh does it ruin it does it deteriorate it does it does it break any of these down um and that's going to be part of the test so what we're going to end up doing um let me get all the cleaners up here and i'll tell you exactly how we're going to test all this what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and, and put the cleaning material uh, or solution into a, a five gallon bucket. Carburetors will go in there. I, I've kicked this around quite a bit and I think what I would like to do for this initially is to put the carburetors in their hole. Don't break them down, don't, don't knock them apart. Um, I, again, I struggled with this on exactly how to do it. The smart way to do this, and I think probably be what most people would do is to break the carburetor down into, into its individual pieces and then soak them or clean them however they're going to clean them. But we're going to take the lazy way out. We're going to put the carburetors in their hole. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal or that much difference, but we're going to find out. It's also, I guess, part of uh, uh, how this is going to go together and we can kind of make some recommendations or assumptions on how clean the carburetors get on the two dirty ones and uh, how it has effect on the finish or the rubber pieces on the other carburetors. We'll do this in two different phases. So uh, we will put these in the solutions. We'll go about 24 hours with them and see how they, uh, how they react, uh, what happens with them. Uh, you know, does it break down any of the, the crud and grossness on here? And then on the two that are kind of more of the uh, the base samples, uh, we'll see how it affects the finish and then we'll kind of break them apart a little bit and uh, see what how they were, how they handled it. The next step of this is I've made this mistake before where I have taken a cleaning solution and put something into it with the full intent of coming back to it later to uh, see what, uh, you know, uh, to, to do the cleaning and all that other stuff and, uh, you know, left it in there for way longer. So I think that's what we'll end up doing. We'll do a 24 hour test and then I'm gonna see how long we can do it for. I may do it for just a week, but uh, I may extend that. I may put it in there for a lot longer to see how bad these chemicals and solutions react with those carburetors. Now again, that would be absolutely worst case scenario, but it's worth seeing and it's worth seeing what happens with the with the carburetor because I think we need to know. We need to be very careful with it or can they be in there for a week, two weeks, a month? I don't know how long we're gonna test this and will it have a negative effect on it? So anyway, let's get these uh, uh, set up uh, with, the, with the buckets and then get the solutions in there, get them soaking, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get the test started. We'll come back in 24 hours and take a look at it. So uh, let's get these into the buckets. So first bucket here is going to be with this uh, fairly dirty carburetor. Oh yeah, if it's down in there good. Hopefully y'all can see that. Nice. So let's try the Berryman's first. Like I said, this one's the filthy one, so hopefully we can get this thing 
Oh yeah, you should be able to use two buckets on this one, no problem. This is number two. And good. It's mostly uh, filled up. I've got another bucket here that I'm going to drop in there. A little bit of it, even though it's a little dirty. That way I think there's going to be some air in there that's going to take that up. But, uh, yeah. Okay. That should be good. Alright. And we'll call this one the Berryman. Okay. Berryman's done. Let's move on to the next one. And I already have a little bit left. Not much in this, uh, this one. So, again, this is worst case scenario. Of people not treating this right so <laughs> forgive me for uh, treating these poorly but uh, cleaner and everything or plastic and electric choke and everything but uh, I guess we're just gonna have to assume that that's uh, pretty close to over the top. I don't think it is, but we'll see. All right, this one will be our super clean. Okay, next we're gonna probably have to dilute this one down a little bit. I think it's mostly covered. Good enough for government work. Okay. Simple green. Okay. I don't know how well this is going to do, but uh, hey, you all suggested it, so I'll give it a shot. So this one didn't get to the top, so I think what I'm going to do is I am going to dilute this one down till at least covers it or you know what I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dilute it down at all it's not covering it all the way as you can see but it's gonna be good enough so I think I'm just gonna seal it up and uh, yeah call it good and this will be a nice smelling pine saw so those are all nestled away I think uh, I think we're pretty good um, again yeah um, the thought was to uh, go completely undiluted with it but uh, if we had to um, we would dilute it down to get it completely covered the only one that's going to be the issue is the pine saw but uh, yeah I don't think that's going to be that bad of a deal so 24 hours and uh We'll come back see what happens well we're about 24 hours in so uh, i guess let's get the tubs cracked open and uh see how things got cleaned up uh over the last 24 hours let's go check it out let's get this uh one out first with the berryman and yeah it looks like we're completely submerged let's see if we can get it out of here without the Alright, let's get her up to the bench, take a look at her. Alright, let's talk about how we're going to do this. I'm not going to completely break these down. I'm going to 
kind of look at it in two different ways. We'll just quickly look at the outside of them, uh, see how things worked out, uh, see if things were loosened up on these two dirty carburetors, and then uh, I'll bop, pop the bowls off the front and just kind of take a look at it. You can already tell right now that this didn't turn out too bad. Um, it's uh, it's loosened up the, the gunk that was on here pretty good. And this wasn't a horrible carburetor. It wasn't bad at all, but... I can tell you that, well, it's just a carburetor cleaner. It's doing pretty well at doing its job. So I think we're going to, yeah, this will clean up really nicely. I mean, it's carburetor cleaner. We would probably all use something similar uh, or whether it's in a spray can or something. And yeah, 24 hours in this thing was overkill. Didn't need to happen, but this would turn out to be a pretty clean carburetor. Let's go ahead and knock... Uh, knock that front bowl off and take a look at it okay. wasn't too bad on the inside you know could have been worse but uh yeah i mean the carburetor cleaner's carburetor cleaner it does a really good job of uh you know cleaning the uh gnarly nasty stuff that, uh, that goes in there not bad that would be a good rebuildable core All this gunk here is really loosened up. A good, nice little uh, quick spray bath. And uh, yeah, this would be a really good serviceable carburetor to go back together with. So I'm going to put this one back together. And then, uh, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, what's going to happen here with all these carburetors in a minute. But let's get the next one out, which was the Super Clean. So be right back. Here is a super clean, and uh, huh, I don't know if you can see those bubbles, but that's actively doing something. <laughs> uh, okay, that's interesting. Let's get it out of there and uh, get it onto the bench, but that is actively working. Something's not uh, not happy there. Don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> wow. Okay. Huh. That's terrifying. Let's get it out onto the bench. <laughs> well, after 24 hours, Mr. Uh, 4160 does not look like it is having a good time. Um, yeah, I'm a little lost for words. Um, okay, um... Yeah, there's some things here that uh, I wasn't quite prepared for. Um, I'm going to show you right now. Let me, gosh, let me get this on the carburetor stand in there, and then e, I'm going to show you what's going on with this thing. It's a little weird. I do not know how well you can see that, but there is the transfer tube from the front bowl and there's the path that follows to the rear bowl but um yeah in 24 hours time that super clean has eaten clean through that transfer tube and it's gone it no longer exists uh yeah after a bath she didn't really I didn't really scrub her off out there. I just kind of hit it with a hose to knock the big stuff off. She doesn't look any better. Um, what I don't know is if that's all that uh, outer coating that's on there, that nice shiny coating, or if it's something more. What's even more crazy is the 
hitting it with a hose at, well, not very high pressure, completely disintegrated the rest of that tube. It's done. It uh, ate all the way through it. I wasn't really expecting that result um, this early. Uh, but again, that was with a non-diluted, full-strength, super clean, whatever that they call that, purple, I don't know. I'll have to get the jug and take a look at it. But that was... Literally, that is the most caustic result I've seen like that in a 24-hour period. Whew. That carburetor is essentially, well, it's junk. Um, you might be able to get some of this stuff out of here and clean. Um, but again, it's, uh, I don't know what you do with it. Um, other than huck it in the dumpster and throw some pictures on social media and laugh about it. But that's done. It's over with. So, wow. Okay. Um, not what I expected. Let's uh, let's move on to the simple green one. And uh, I'm not even going to take the balls off of this thing. I'm just going to leave it together. Um, and then we'll keep going here. But, uh, wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> simple green is next. Stand by. Now that that nightmare is over, um, yeah, this was our shiny control. Uh, the simple green got that really nice, pretty finished carburetor, and uh, yeah, it's taking it. Uh, just about completely off, it appears. Um, oh, well, you can see that. Let me get some water on it here. Yeah, it's completely taking it off. Um, wow, okay. Un, uh, undiluted simple green. Um, yeah, don't leave it in for 24 hours, apparently, because it turns your carburetor blackish brown. But hey, on a positive, our uh, transfer tube is still there. So, okay. Um, you know, it looks pretty clean. It wasn't wasn't horrible. So, um, I mean, this one wasn't bad. But uh, you know, I didn't expect the, these to be as caustic as they are. Um, and. Uh, Let's get uh, yeah well it's taking that shiny layer off um, the transfer tube still has some integrity unlike the uh, super clean one so looks like all the paints off the kind of expected that but uh, wow um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the same amount of activity in that one when it was sitting in the bucket, but, uh, it certainly, uh, did a number on it, so, <laughs> well, not much really else to say about this one, I guess let's, uh, I'm not gonna wash this one off and neutralize it, um, but, uh, yeah, this carburetor's probably okay, I, I guess, but, uh, it did take off that nice shiny coating and now it's just a really dull so let's uh wow okay let's get this uh get this one out of here and uh we'll go get the pine saw one wow okay results i wasn't expecting but cool last but not least mr pine saw um you know it doesn't look like it's lost its uh luster still shiny I mean like I said remember this was kind of a control and it was really really clean this one practical carburetor is practically brand new so really don't think there's uh, much to talk about with this one it is uh, yeah I mean it smells nice 
only thing on this one that's a little weird is those boosters are turning kind of fuzzy. So, let's see if I can. Yeah, whatever's on the. Whatever outer layers on those boosters is not happy with the pine saw. It is not uh, not a fan of that uh, that cleaning spot. You can see how it's turning the toothbrush kind of gray. So interesting. Well, yeah, that's just something to monitor, I guess, and keep an eye on. Interesting. Okay. Well, like I said, it smells beautiful in here. Um, the fuel transfer tube is <laughs> intact. So that's a bonus, I guess. Um, okay. Well, let me wrap up this real quick and then I'm going to tell you what the next uh, uh, step in this tuning process or this uh, cleaning process looks like. Well, I've got some bad news for these um, <laughs> these carburetors. They are back in their little bath. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, the um, terrifying one, the super clean, is already boiling back away. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them back here in the, their little uh, their little bath. I may try to see if I got some more pine saw. Maybe get that one filled up completely. I don't think it really matters at this point. But what I'm going to do is the plan was to leave these in here for several weeks. Um, if I leave that in the super clean for several weeks, there's going to be nothing in there. Um, so here's the plan. I'm going to leave these in for another week-ish. Maybe a little less, we'll find out, and then we'll take them back out again and um, <laughs> see, see what happened. Um, that's terrifying. It's it's literally boiling as as we speak. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close these back up, and then uh, we'll come back in a week and see what happened. Um, yeah, wow. Entertaining as hell. Okay, we'll see you in a week.